my channel and to what I think is quite an exciting video because for the first time in rather a while I actually left the UK and have gone to a completely different country which is Denmark. <laughs> this video is quite a long time after it's currently November but I went to Denmark in October with one of my really good friends from home and also from uni to be fair too and it was my first time ever going to Scandinavia so it was really really cool to go to a completely different part of Europe first impressions of Scandinavia oh my goodness it is so lovely it's so clean it's so organized the people are so friendly so I can definitely give raving reviews but anyway, whilst I was there, I took a few little videos just for my own keepsakes mainly, um, just to vlog a little bit of my time in Copenhagen. It's all just videos. Um, I thought I would do a little bit of a voiceover. So personally myself, I don't forget what actually I did. And also for people who are after a bit of information, if anyone's thinking of going to Copenhagen and wants some ideas of things to do, um, did I say I'd gone to Copenhagen or did I just say I went to Denmark? I can't remember, but I went to Copenhagen. Um, but yeah, it was a really nice trip. We had a really good time. And so yeah, I thought I would just bring it all together in a little video and put it on my channel. So without further ado, I don't think there's much more to say in our introduction. So I guess let's just begin with the video. Um, so first things first. Actually, before I start putting the videos over my speaking, the public transport in Copenhagen was like phenomenal. I don't know if it's just because I'm from the UK and so I have pretty low standards of like trains, but honestly, the trains, as you can see in the video that's about to come, it was so clean. Everyone was silent and it wasn't a silent character. It was literally like sitting in first class, but that was just standard. It was just so clean, so well maintained. They were so regular, so like punctual, and they were never like crammed, but they were always full. Like it was just, they'd just done it right. I think the UK could learn a lot from their public transport. Um, but yeah, so we, when we arrived at the airport, we first took the train into Copenhagen, which I think, it may have just been about 20 minutes. It was really, really quick. You just hopped straight on um, and then it took you straight to the Copenhagen Central Station, which was really convenient. And um, that's just the station there, which was so pretty with all the flags up. And now that's me. Um, <laughs> rather excited. We went straight to the hotel on the first day when we arrived and there were free drinks. And I think we're all united in the fact that we love free drinks, right? Yeah, I'm rather excited as you can see. But now the round tower, this is actually the first place we went to on our trip. And it was honestly the coolest thing. You can see there, it's rather steep. But it was actually built in 1637. And it was built to house the university's observatory at the time, hence its height. And it also held a library and is kind of on top of a church as well um you're gonna see there's rather a lot of steps but it had the most incredible view at the top um where you could just see across Copenhagen um and the day was such a clear day we just had such a great view from the top there were also as you went up other exhibitions going on at the time um, so it made it really interesting the whole way up and we got to see the sunset from the top which was really nice too you can just see you probably <laughs> don't know what's going on there that's one of those you know when they have the glass panels and it makes it look like there's no ground it's one of them and that's me just plucking up the courage to stand on it <laughs> you can see how high it is it's very very tall and this, I guess, is the main part of the whole round tower, what it was built for, the observatory, which is obviously right at the top and was just incredible to, to go into. It is 
I'm pretty sure the oldest working observatory in Europe, which is really cool. And what's really cool about it as well, sorry for using cool so much, but from about mid-October, I think, um, through winter, they actually open it up in the evenings twice a week um, and two people run it and you can actually go up and it's included in the ticket price and have a look yourself through the telescope, which was really cool. So we kind of waited, you can see the city's so pretty when it's dark too. Um, we waited so that we could have a look through the telescope. Because actually, it's something I've never actually done before, like in an observatory, it's a really cool thing to do, so I'd really recommend. And even though they said the visibility wasn't wonderful when we were there, we could actually see Saturn make out its rings, which was incredible to see. So, yeah, really worth a visit. The roof was really clever because it all rotates and it's all powered by strings. But that is Tivoli Gardens, which is a attraction park that's really famous in Copenhagen. And you can see it was all decorated for Halloween. Um, the lanterns are really cool. And that is just a food hall um, that is right next to the gardens. We didn't actually go into the theme park, but if you are looking for somewhere to eat, I would really recommend this because they've got everything there, including traditional Danish food and not so. And it wasn't particularly pricey for Danish food, so it's quite a good place to go. I actually thought at the time I'd be really adventurous and go for a small broad. I apologise for saying that wrong. And let me just unpack this now. It's not my cup of tea, but you know I tried it, so... <laughs> Hello, I've just stopped in because I I feel like I've got many minutes of footage, but when I begin to talk, it's probably just me because I talk way too much, as we all know, but I just, I just run out of time. And I think the cuisine is something that is important to unpick and talk about. Do you agree, Chester? Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, food is a big part of a lot of places' culture and history. And so, the first thing I decided to try, and I thought, like, why not, is small board. I'm very sorry if I've said that wrong. I'll put it on the screen so everyone can actually see the word that I'm talking about. But essentially, from my understanding as a non-Danish person, it's half a sandwich, like, it's a sandwich without the safety piece of bread on the top. I think it's traditionally on kind of rye breads, really dense breads, and that is what I had when I tried it. Um, and they do vegetarian and, and meat ones, but I think they probably traditionally... Chest is already bored. <laughs> they probably traditionally were fish and meat-based, because obviously Copenhagen is right by the sea. So when I went to try the small board, I knew lots of toppings and some looked to me like things I was more used to than others. For example, smoked salmon. I would often have smoked salmon on bread or something like that. So, so I was like, I'm not gonna try ones that I already kind of know. I'll try something different. And I was like, what is more different than something I would ever have that I feel like is quite hardcore? And I settled on pickled herring, which in hindsight was a mistake. I went for a potato one. I was like, cover your bases. Can't go wrong with a vegetarian potato topped one. But the herring, I gotta say, it was strong and I was not quite prepared. But I did eat it, so it's fine, don't worry. My experience with the small board was, you know, I don't think I'd go for the pickled herring again. That's just because I'm not a fan of pickled herring. It was really interesting to try, but I was quite cold when I ate them and they were cold food. And so I think it's more of a summer thing in my opinion. Moving on from Small Rod to a very important part of Denmark that we all know and love, the pastries. Oh my goodness. I don't think I actually have a video of any Danish pastries, disappointingly, but they are the nicest things. I love them in the UK and they're not even always great. So you can imagine how good they were in Denmark. They always had these like this cinnamon bread thing there, which I thought was incredible. I've never had it before. It wasn't brioche, but it was like a bread with cinnamon plattered in. And they had that at the, like the hotel breakfast every morning and it was divine. It also had like this thick kind of icing on it. It was 
so nice but also they had the best danishes i tried so many danishes that i've never had before if you haven't had a danish yet today this is your you know this is your message go treat yourself you know if you like them go treat yourself because honestly they were delicious but that is enough talk about food should we go back to the video <laughs> So another thing that we did while we were in Copenhagen, which uh, again, I would really recommend to everyone, is we went on a free walking tour that I literally just Googled online and found. Um, it was a f like really windy day, so <laughs> it made it slightly hard at times because we were all freezing. But it went around all of like the key locations in Copenhagen and it was, I think, about an hour and a half, so it wasn't too long which sometimes it can be information overload um, but we actually ended up at one of the royal palaces just as it was the changing of the guard which we didn't plan at all but it was quite cool to see and i found it really incredible how close they let you get to the guards when they were changing because obviously in the uk when you're in london or anywhere where there's a palace um, you are quite far away, whereas you you were literally in the middle of the palaces in a in a circle, and you were just stood there, which was kind of cool. And this is the marble church, which honestly was one of the most incredible buildings I think that I saw in Copenhagen, both from the outside and the inside. Um, it actually took 145 years to build, and the tour guide told us that it was the fifth largest domed building in the in the world or in Europe when we came out as you can see in the distance the guards then came across from the palace and walked all the way past so this is definitely like insider info if you want to get a nice uninterrupted view of the the guards marching you should get away at, at the marble church um and after our tour this is the King's Garden and Friedrichsborg Castle. Um, you can see from the the plants how windy it was. But this is just like a park, a free park, with obviously the castle, which you can pay to go to exhibitions inside. But it was really pretty. And that is Hans Christian Andersen. And then when we came out, we saw that National Gallery from a distance, which was pretty. And you can see me looking at the things above the road because I still don't know if they're lights or what they are. That's the botanical garden. And this is Jägersbogard. I can't remember exactly how to say that, but there were loads of little pumpkins and hang on a second, you need to see this. Okay, we just need to cross the road first, but then you will see the cutest thing ever. I think potentially the cutest thing I saw in Copenhagen. Oh my goodness, the little dog in the carriage at the front of the bike. Oh, I would love to be able to do that. But anyway, this area is a tiny bit further out the center, but it's a really cool artsy area. There's loads of people who make their own jewelry, handmade crafts, and there's a street with loads of these shops on. Um, and we took the Metro to go and visit it. And some of the stuff was really cool. This lady's stuff was really cool. Look, she's made stuff out of pen and ping pong balls everything it was like these shops were the coolest that's glasses where she's drilled into them and honestly like her workroom was in the front of the shop it was just really cool it felt like out of this worldly to go and visit like i was in a book or something everything's so colorful and all the shapes and stuff this is their tram which i filmed purely for the fact tram metro because i couldn't believe how nice it was it was nicer than the elizabeth line and the elizabeth line is new right um that was our pizza dinner which was i have to admit significantly more enjoyable for me than my small rod and this is yet another one of those windows of a large drop which again i just about plucked up the courage to stand on and there was an amazing view of the city this was just the bar at the top of our hotel which was fun. Um, and here we are, another day, another palace. Christiansborg Palace is now used as like parliament. 
I think the Prime Minister's offices are in the palace itself now, and they use it for like state dinners and things. But you can see, no, it's not the swim well swimming lessons where the parents have to wear the blue shoes to collect children. It is a palace, and they had us in these blue shoes. Which, okay, I think I'm focusing on more than the palace itself now. But the palace has been burnt down many, many times, which is something I had no idea about. To be honest, I didn't know much about the royal family at all um, from Denmark, but it's a very similar uh, setup that they have to the UK. And the palace was so pretty. And considering it's been burnt down that many times or destroyed um, because of invasions and, and whatnot, they've built it so nicely every single time. Um, this is their great hall, their banqueting hall, where they host state dinners. They had really beautiful tapestries that had been handmade all around the whole room. That's me ice skating, because why wouldn't you? The tapestries were actually built to celebrate the Queen's 50th birthday in 1990, um, and there are 11 in total. Um, this one here is depicting the, I think, depicting the 20th century, or, or modern times, basically which had loads of notable figures from all around the world, which I thought was fascinating that they hadn't just focused on Danish history, they'd focused on world history. Which isn't something that you really see often, I think. Oh, I, I should say, the reason I'm wearing headphones is because they have a guided tour all the way around, um, which is just done on your phone. Um, up there is actually where the Prime Minister's offices are. And then after going around the palace, we went under it into the ruins of the old castles which existed there before there was even a palace. Um, I think dates back to the 1100s, but that was really amazing to see. And obviously it's been preserved underneath the palace now. That's a model of it of what it used to look like, which I think it looked extraordinary, very different architecture style to now, um, but apparently it ponged a lot, so, you know, swings and roundabouts of having a moat and all, and that's the kitchen, which I filmed a lot of because I love the copper. I just feel like we don't get as much of this lovely copper kitchenware anymore, but that's probably because it's kind of running out. Okay, and what you're about to see next is a combination of my terrible acting and also not actually having a clue of what I'm trying to act but apparently that is the famous walk and talk location from the series I think it's on Netflix Borgen which I haven't seen but it's set in Danish parliament and my friend has seen it and she very much likes so we both had to go recreating it and obviously we can tell that I failed but that was the stable where they had loads of carriages that you just saw and that is the exterior of the palace. Now, after doing this, it was we were so cold. I don't think the video show how windy it was, but there was a storm while we were there, and it was 50 mile an hour wind. So we went into a department store, and yes, I had many of those free samples, um, just to warm up. And this is kind of their biggest, kind of nicest department store they have. And it was pretty nice. Most importantly, it was warm. And... Who doesn't like having a mooch at times? Actually, that is actually a different department store that we also went into. Uh, not the first one with the wonderful, wonderful samples of bread. Chocolate bread, of course. Lots of Christmas decorations. And then the Lego store, which obviously, if people know Lego, it's a Danish company. It's not actually from Copenhagen exactly, but of course they had Lego stores. And look at all the Lego badges over time which I didn't realise they've changed their logo so much. I always enjoyed Lego growing up, and I do have a large collection of Lego still, and so it's quite cute to see, oh, that's all the Harry Potter stuff, which is what I collect. Um, oh, they had one of those things where it tells you what character you are, and I was that green thing from Star Wars. I haven't seen Star Wars, but yeah. And then my friend, she got someone who kind of looks like us so i don't know if it was saying that i look like this green thing what's he called i can't remember not r2d oh i can't yoki loki maybe i can't remember 
those cakes look divine and here is a good indication of the windiness level in copenhagen can you see that umbrella it is holding on for dear life it was so windy but that pasta was so nice so it was worth it we did then have a couple more days in copenhagen but this is kind of the last bit of videoing i did in copenhagen and it is neuhaven which used to be the commercial port of Copenhagen. There is a clip of it earlier in my video in daylight, but it, in the evening it was also really pretty. You could still make out it's got really, really colourful buildings and houses. Um, and it actually is where Hans Christian Andersen used to live. But I think that is all there is to show for today's video. I had a really wonderful time. Copenhagen is a really beautiful city and there was just, it was such a cool city too. There was so much going on people were lovely um, I would definitely recommend if people haven't been there before to go um, there is we did actually get take a day trip to a place called Roskilde which is actually used to be the old capital of Denmark and was a place where Vikings were based and that was quite a fascinating trip so I'm gonna make it into its own video in itself because I feel like there's a fair bit to show and say about that. So if you are interested in Vikings or just seeing somewhere else in Denmark that's not Copenhagen, do pop over to the next video, which probably will come up a few days after this one. And yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed the video, found it somewhat interesting. If you have any tips for other people, do please put it in the comments because maybe someone watching this video might find them useful. And yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day and yeah, much see you next time. Thank you so much for watching as ever. If you haven't and you do like to see these videos, do subscribe and join the crew. But yeah, anyway, I will see you another day. Until then, see you later.